Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we got enough meat for a meatloaf here. And uh, actually, you know what? I, I can't remember what number this one is, but <laughs> it's on the title. Um, I've been off the air for a couple of weeks. Uh, my editing computer died. So uh, a lot of people have sent me emails asking, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Everything's fine. Um, I had to get a new computer and I, I couldn't, uh, you know, I got tons of video footage that I've been taking along the way, but uh, I haven't been able to edit it, so I had to buy a new hot rod computer and everything's back normal and I'm editing again and uh, all is well. So with this meatloaf we got some cool stuff, uh, counter sinks, uh, another level project maybe, um, some books. Um, we're going to pick up on our little crate test thing, so uh, some viewers uh, submitted some, uh, some great ideas and we're going to try those out and I think we got it nailed. Um, no pun intended there. Um, we have um, the five block challenge. Uh, this is this grinding challenge uh, that we were talking about a few weeks ago where uh, you grind your uh, chuck and then you grind a couple of blocks and you compare the blocks. Well, we got some blocks to compare. Uh, man, we got a couple other things to throw in there. So I'll quit yapping and uh, let's go play in the shop, see what's going on. All right. So we got this uh, Nikon um, objective turret here and um, a lot of guys expressed interest in um, seeing this thing come apart and see what the guts of this thing looks like. Now I made a couple of tools um, on camera. Actually this is not the one I made on camera. I made two of them. Uh, one of them I gave to my friend at work that uh, collects these microscopes and actually <laughs> got me going on them. Um, anyway, this is an, an earlier one that, uh, that I had made, but uh, the one I showed on camera is the one that <clears throat> I made for him. Anyway, uh, so the start here is to remove this little cap here. Now, typically these get destroyed when you pull them off because they, Nikon glues them on. Uh, actually, they use a lot of glue in the, the assembly here. But, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of want to try to recover it if I can. Um, so we're going to try something different. I've tried a couple of things and that haven't worked, and uh, so I'm going to try one more thing. <laughs> so I've been soaking it with uh, some uh, solvent. Uh, and this is basically uh, charcoal lighter fluid, which actually is a really good uh, cleaning solvent uh, for breaking grease down and stuff like that. So it uh, works really good. Now, uh, so I've been soaking that, and it goes through that little hole, and the idea is it'll help, you know, soften that glue joint a little bit, and maybe we can pull that off without killing it or with destroying it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I have this carriage bolt that I sanded flat, and we're going to hot glue that on there and try to use that as our leverage to peel that thing up and see how that works, okay? So I'm going to clean it with a little bit of, uh, of uh, something less polar, um, just denatured, which evaporates really nicely here. Clean this, good. And I got my, uh, my hot glue gun going there, so all right, let's give it a go here. Flowing properly. Wipe off the tip. Now, I think this is the. I think we're just gonna hit this one here. That should be more than enough. Uh, I might have waited too long. Oh. <laughs> All right. Hey, guess what? It worked. <laughs> How do you like that? Actually, I'm thinking that uh, I'm thinking that that little bit of heat uh, might have done the trick. You know, the solvent under there, and you can see the glue there, right? The solvent, yeah, that's warm. Um, the solvent under there, kind of wicking in there, and then uh, when I, I hit it with the uh, with the hot glue, then dink, Bob's your uncle. Okay, all right. So there's our victim right there, and uh, there's an unmolested screw underneath there. And uh, our little screwdriver bit fits in there, so let's, uh, let's pre prepare to uh, dissect. All right, let's give this a go here. Try to keep it in frame here and not uh, 
course, it's got the machinist fit there, eh? There we go. Now, you know what? I'm going to have to hold it up. Oops. Sorry, guys. Here, folks. So there you can see the first uh, the first piece of the puzzle there. It's got a full complement of balls in there, um, very small balls, and uh, and you can see them right there. Now what happens is the uh, the grease, the original grease that they use on these uh, uh, tends to get old and dry and kind of stiff, and it collects dust and whatnot, um, and then. Uh, you know that it doesn't work as nicely. All right, this looks pretty good. Um, the bear, the balls run right against this taper here, and this is how you adjust the preload as well. Um, it's got a little ball track in it. It's not too serious. We'll clean that up and um, spruce it all up. So I'm gonna actually get a little cup and I'm gonna pull those out. Yeah. See the 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 grease is real sticky. Now these are a common size ball, so it's not a you know the end of the world if you uh, if you lose one and I have extras. And this is also where you really you know if your tools are magnetized, it really makes your life miserable. Now, these are non-magnetic tweezers, but what's going on is the grease that's on here. You see that? I mean, that's how sticky the grease is. You just touch one of these things and you got it. And this is the first layer. There's another, there's another layer underneath. All right, let me pluck all these out and then we'll uh, open up the next level. Set that one aside. All right, let's see what we got here. There they are. <laughs> oh, pile of balls. And you can see there's a crispy, cr oh, actually, that's a detent, but it's full of, it's, it's covered with, uh, um, spoogy grease there, uh, so it's not very happy. Let's uh, peel all those out of there. Yeah, see, there, this stuff is on this grease is almost dry at this point. But what's amazing is that, uh, or what I find amazing is that Nikon went to you know a lot of trouble to get the feel of this thing correct right and uh, they wanted to rotate uh, easily and um, and have positive detents you know this thing is, sol is solid brass uh, looks like a casting or a forging even uh, that's very carefully machined chrome plated it looks like and you know it's got a hundred how many is in here a hundred and eight sixteen of the big ones and then uh, um, this is 30 of the little ones. Yeah, I don't believe that. It's more than 30 in there. So, uh, anyway, uh, you know, so just, just so that this thing feels good. And this is just one part of the microscope here, right? Now, it's a part that you use a lot because you're shifting uh, between objective lenses pretty frequently, typically. You know, going from low power to high power. Okay. All right, so anyway, the, the next step is a bunch of cleaning. I'll clean it a little bit because uh, what's of interest next is to examine the, the detent feature on this, which is actually uh, very simple, but uh, it has a really nice feel. Okay, so get this cleaned up <clears throat> so we can get a look at it. Um, this one's actually really badly worn. I, I was pretty surprised to see this. Uh, whoever had this particular nose piece was... Uh, 
was cranking the monkey's uncle out of this one. So let's check it out. Um, so this one here is pretty close to normal here, um, what it should look like. So it's got a ramp coming up, then a 90 degree V, and then a ramp coming down. Okay. Now this is this is chrome plated here, hard chrome plated, and um, um, so that detent locates this objective here. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> So let's look at one that's really trashed here. Okay, there we go. Look at that. So the, the ramps are, the tops are flattened off and the V is basically non-existent. Okay. And uh, I, I thought this one felt a little a little crummy, but uh, um, <laughs> I, I didn't realize how crummy. Now, it's worn so, the, the hard chrome is worn through. Uh, you know, it's just a, I don't know how thick it is here, probably not more than a mill or two, um, but uh, not millimeter, uh, one thousandths of an inch. Um, and the uh, the brass below is exposed, right? So, uh, where, you know, you can see that this is brass, right? Um, so now, what, what rides in that, which is what uh, I think is part of what makes this thing feel good, is uh, um, it has... It has a hardened steel, basically a spherical um, detent, okay? And now the cool part is, is that, that detent, let's see if I can do it and have it in focus and all that. Uh, I'm going to get a little fat hands in the way there. Okay, here we go. I'll do it like that. Let's see if I can flex it. That's a flexure. Okay, so it's this triangular shaped piece. Um, I'll show you on the diagram too, but it's attached with these two screws here. And this is just a, a formed uh, sphere, right? Uh, dimpled into the sheet metal, right? And then that thing is, uh, let's use this other end here. Let's see if I can push on it there. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it's pretty stiff, okay? But at that radius, it, it, it produces a, you know, just a real nice little tink, and it just snaps into place when it's lubricated, and the, the chrome is very hard, and this is hardened steel as well, right? So they slide together really nice, okay? So let's see if we can, uh, I don't want to spill these little cups of balls for obvious reason. It's going to blow out the camera here. But there's the uh, there's that little detent piece there. Of course, they glue the dang screws in there and all that. So uh, um, <laughs> we're not going after that. We're just going to clean it. So this one, uh, you know, I'll keep this one as a spare, and you know, because it's so worn, I'll put it back together, lubricate it, and uh, put it in a bag or whatever, and keep it as a spare. Um, you know, you need more than one of these because there's different diameter objectives, and sometimes you have many different. Uh, styles. You have top illumination, bottom illumination, there's a few other things that are going on there. Um, so you need, a, you, know, you need a few of these uh, kicking around. So anyway, a little study in design, uh, you know, just very nicely put together and good choices in materials and things like that. A couple of guys uh, were asking about uh, this little setup here. Um, there's nothing special here, there's no magic. And all this is is some small containers uh, these are little cryo uh, storage tubes here that I got somewhere. Um, and uh, a little acid brush. Uh, it's just, you know, for soldering. And I just pump, popped a hole in the lid and stuck this through there. And it just keeps the brush from dragging around on the bench and leaving a trail of this anti seize. And this, that's what's in here is anti seize. This is just to protect the brush. And this is just a small container of anti seize here. And. Um, this is uh, your boss ditch uh, blue molly here, and uh, a molybdenum disulfide and and some other secret sauce in there. And it's just a small container, and that's all it is. Otherwise, you're you're dealing with. Uh, so here's what you're dealing with, right? I want to do a little screw, and here's what you got to work with. <laughs> a big blobosaurus there. So. Uh, Anyway, that's all it is uh, for doing small stuff and uh, just a little portable setup. Okay, so this next one, uh, this comes to us from um, Steve Antal, 
and tall, and uh, he's in Holly Ridge, North Carolina, and uh, he, he uh, emailed me, and uh, he's got a, a son that, uh, a little son, is calls, he calls him his little buddy, uh, and they watch uh, Ox Tools videos together, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, he sent me a little picture of that. Anyway, uh, Steve, I sent him some stickers, and uh, he uh, reciprocated, and he sent me this pretty cool hammer here, and um, um, it's copper. Um, it's obviously been used very extensively. Looks like an original handle to me, and somebody really, really worked this thing, and uh, it says... Uh, Nothstein or Steen, Nothstein, something like that. Um, more interestingly, is what was the what were they pounding on? Right. Um, it looks like I see a lot of little, very thin little lines in this, and in, in both sides. So some of the its use, it might have been pounding on uh, maybe steel rule blades or who knows what. Anyway, uh, uh, very well used, very well loved uh, uh, little hammer he sent me there. So Steve, thank you very much. That's great. And um, say hi to little Elec and uh, that's the little buddy. So hey Elec, how you doing? <laughs> and uh, thanks for the hammers guys. All right, let's go in the collection. All right, so uh, you know, we finished this uh, Pratt & Whitney uh, level the other day, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago now, and um, there's actually quite a bit of, uh, of discussion about uh, uh, the material choices here for uh, these thermal isolators. So let me, I guess I'm just going to clear some of that up. And um, now, if you guys really would have been uh, paying attention and watching the video very closely, um, you know, I started with making two thermal isolators, but I diverged uh, once I wasn't having any trouble with the phenolic, and I only actually made one. So one of these is is the original with the the level, which is made out of phenolic, and I made one. I completed one, I should say, um, additional one. So that was one of the reasons I didn't I didn't want to make two. I had one good one, right? So I just made one replacement out of the same material. Now, if I would have mixed materials and made one out of Delrin, which would have worked fine, um, you know, that's kind of, that's, <laughs> I, I call that crossing the line in, uh, in uh, kind of restorative work is, uh, is mixing uh, more modern materials there. So, uh, I mean, it, it happens, but it, it's just, you know, it's just one little, you know, bonus point there or whatever. So the other, the other thing that came up, which was actually even more interesting was, uh, Somebody, somebody mentioned uh, uh, aligning these, uh, these screw heads, right? So getting them all so they're all lined up in the same direction, which is pretty common with, uh, uh, with uh, retentive type uh, boat builders and uh, things like that. So, but there's a problem with doing that on this, okay? Robin Renzetti, um, he, he ground and scraped this and I think uh, inspected it and it's better than, than 30 millionths flatness across uh, the bottom of this, right? Now, believe it or not, um, if you whale on these screws and, and tighten them up uh, kind of uh, randomly, um, you will distort the, this shape, okay? And in fact, it's me hanging on to this right now, uh, warming it up, this thing is is changing in some very weird curve. Um, so, you know, yeah, you can tighten those up. Um, ideally, you would you would have these all torqued down uh, the way you want it, and then you would you would scrape for bearing um, uh, with those torqued in place. Now, Robin couldn't do that because uh, he didn't have the thermal isolators, and um, so he just you know. Um, did what he did, and then uh, when I put it together, I didn't uh, I didn't reef on these uh, on these screws. So that's how sensitive this this stuff is when you get down into this level. So anyway, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so the other thing that happens when you when you start playing around with this kind of stuff is these things tend to multiply. So this. This arrived uh, via some uh, horse trading with uh, Yeti Man, and uh, look at this. Oh crap! The uh, thermal isolator's uh, blown up on this one too. <laughs> 
you know, it's like this stuff just falls out of the sky, right? So uh, here's another one that has a, uh, a broken thermal isolator. Now this one's a little tougher here because it's got some uh, engraving on it. And in fact, uh, I sent an email to stare it to see if uh, this, just the isolator is, uh, is available here. Now there, you know, when I took this off to kind of examine it, I found something that was really cool. And uh, I'll zoom in and uh, try to give you guys a good shot of this. So I didn't have any idea of the vintage of this particular one here, uh, but now I do once I took this off. So let me, uh, let me zoom in on that and I'll show you because it's pretty neat. So when I, uh, when I pulled this cover off, here's what I found. Check this out. You see that right there? So the inspector, the, or the person at Sterrett that, uh, that put this together, they marked, um, they marked the end of this vial. And it's marked uh, November 17th, 1947, uh, I think is what it was. 47 or 45? 44, 1944. Um, and then on the opposite end, um, let's see if I can do this. It says 8.8. .8. Now, what I think that means is this particular level is uh, um, what they call a 10 second, 10 arc second level. So it can discriminate uh, 10 arc seconds per division, I believe. Um, I'm not positive on that, but I, I have to double check that. So, um, you know, maybe the, uh, they made the vials up and um, uh, they marked them ahead of time, or um, um, they calibrated this, uh, this level and then he wrote that on, or they wrote that on there. Now this one needs a little bit of help. Uh, needs some more some white paint underneath the vial so that the the uh, it pops. And uh, obviously we need another uh, uh, we need to do something with that. So uh, anyway, another project.